Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is John Lewis, and I'm here from Swansea Bay to talk about our experience of the GE Star Guide uh, system. Um, but if I may, before we focus on the Star Guide, uh, just a brief detour showing you how we got to where we are actually today. Uh, I have no conflict of interest to disclose, including commercial funding. So, although the systems in the photo served us well for a substantial period of time, and I mean substantial, uh, it was definitely the time to modernize our particular department, and this was spearheaded by the installation of two new Spec CT systems. Um, a rather challenging period ensued while we tried to ma maintain our patient throughput because we were down to one spec CT camera in a very busy department. It meant imaging long days, 12-hour shifts, uh, including Saturdays, uh, obviously optimizing patient bookings, maximizing camera scanning time. The camera was doing nothing but running for 12 hours a day. Uh, a big commitment from our nuclear medicine staff, chopping and changing shifts and, and being really flexible. And this was all during the COVID-19 period, uh, including whilst the, we were under lockdown. So meanwhile, uh, a major refurbishment was uh, being carried out, meaning most of the department was closed off for building work. It became a building site. And we sort of decamped it to a small area, uh, and the conditions were the less than ideal, you know, and it was during a really hot summer. Um, and in with the new, uh, here they are, the, these are the shiny two spec CT systems which are bringing, have brought our department really up to date. Uh, and we've got a GE uh, 870DR um, and a GE Star Guide. So uh, from this point, um, uh, I'll try and focus on the Star Guide system I itself. Uh, and the first thing I'd like to uh, speak about is uh, training. So. Staff were given uh, access to the G GE Digital Academy, which is an excellent educational and training resource. Uh, this was uh, as the installation was taking place, so before the cameras were actually on site, we were already um, sort of accessing this training resource where you've got a kind of virtual reality type um, uh, environment in, uh, for the staff. Oops. Okay. Installation um, of the systems uh, was uh, carried out in early 2022. Uh, this was followed by on-site training uh, over several weeks led by GE application specialists. Um, the application specialists then, along with our departmental clinical scientists, they worked together during the initial user protocol setup. And the practical on-site training was also provided uh, to clinical and technical staff by uh, GE. <coughs> so the benefits that we noticed fairly soon uh, were improved spec resolution uh, images, uh, especially of fine anatomical detail. Uh, increased patient comfort. I mean, the, 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 the bed is actually quite comfortable from, from the patient's point of view. Um, ease of use is, you know, it's a pretty simple machine to, to, to use. Um, predictable and repeatable scan times. Now, this is quite an important one for us because very often when you're trying to, to run um, a, a bone list, for instance, uh, and you don't know how many regional spec so you're going to carry out on any particular 2D plane image until you actually see it. It's, sometimes it's quite difficult to run on time. So the, 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 the star guys allows us to allocate X amount of time per patient and actually stick to that so that the patients come on the camera uh, on time. Um, maximizing patient throughput uh, for MPI studies in particular. Uh, and also for the MPI studies, we acquire the CT on the stress only, and then use that CT for the rest component uh, should it be indicated. Uh, minimizing scanning time overall, uh, and the whole body uh, 3D imaging, improved diagnostic accuracy, and less need for extra views. 
easy to set uh, up the spec CT from the smart console. Which brings me to the Swift plan workflow. So this is a fancy name for what it's doing basically is just making, as a, a user, your life a little bit easier. Um, so in conjunction with the Optical Scout, which is something I'll talk about in a sec, um, the Swift plan workflow is designed to just to simplify the interactions between the machine uh, and the user. Um, as you can see on that, on, on that image, features such as the interactive table ruler uh, make for a really good user experience. You know, it's nice and easy to set up. You, you top of the head, bottom of the feet, top of the torso, bottom of the torso, there are four button presses, and then that's literally it. You press the green button. So um, this optical scout, what is it? It's, um, it's located within the 80 centimeter bore. It's a window, it looks a little bit like a CT window. Uh, what the optical scout does is it quickly scans the patient to create a kind of topographical map of the body, um, which allows the detectors and the bed's position then to be re uh, pre-configured before the actual live scan begins. Um, so what happens is, is that the star guides, detectors, and table are automatically positioned in very close proximity to the patient, um, obviously then to improve the, the resolution. But there are a few bits and pieces you've got to be careful of with the optical scout. Uh, you've got to take care during patient positioning. Um, this machine is a little bit more um, demanding in terms of taking care with patient positioning. And you know, if you take care at the setup, it'll actually gain you time halfway through the scan because you'll avoid errors. So the optical scout, as, as I said, can give you error due to things like um, hanging bits of paper, even a small bit of paper hanging off the side of the bed, uh, straps, patients' clothing, things hanging off the, the side of their, their clothing. Um, those type of things can actually give an error uh, with the machine. Uh, and obviously, you need to keep your hands away from the optical scout as the actual bed is, is driven th uh, through the window. Um, setup essentials. So, as with other, as I've just said, as with other scanners, it is particularly important, though, to take care with this with this machine to avoid errors, which you know it will definitely save you time. Um, what I've noticed um, sometimes, and patients do do this, if a patient needs to move up or down the bed, so you've, you've laid them on the bed, and you think, okay, they're not quite in the right place, and you ask them to move up the bed or move down the bed uh, uh, a couple of centimeters, and if they engage a kind of jerky type movement, this can cause a bed and cradle misalignment error, which means that the cradle and the bed will misalign itself, and that will lead to an error um, during the scan. So it's important to be aware of these practical things, you know. The next thing to talk about is this so-called smart console. So I particularly like the, the, the smart console because it, it makes our lives a, a lot easier and anything that makes our lives easier, um, I like. So um, the smart console, how can I explain it? It's a, it's, it's a digital productivity hub for hybrid imaging. Um, it's, it's obviously network capable, um, and it enables us to automate spec CT reconstructions uh, live and retrospectively. So the console is actually optimized to um, hold the latest reconstruction algorithms, and they change uh, quite often on applications. And then it also allows us to share patient data f from the, the smart console itself. Um, the next slide I'm going to show you is, this, I particularly like this slide because it shows how the 12 detector 360 system can get, as previous speakers have, have alluded to, it can get uh, much closer to the patient's surface. So we are improving resolution purely by that act. You know, if, if you've got detectors which are a centimeter away from the patient's surface, uh, surface all the way around, then you, you're going to gain a, a, quite an advantage with that. So you've got the, the 12 detectors in a 360 degree pattern. Each detector has a radial in and out motion so that it can move in and out. And also has a sweep motion inside the detector head itself. This does lead to improved spec resolution. 
So this list now is uh, what we currently use the star guide for routinely. And you, you may fa uh, f find it to be quite a, a restrictive list, but th this represents, um, in terms of throughput, a lot of our work. So the machine is busy. Um, and you, you can see it, it also represents a kind of starting point for us with more work planned for further optimization in terms of imaging time and dose, because what we'd love to do is reduce the dose or reduce the imaging time or both in an ideal world. So we got the myocardial perfusion stress uh, spec CT, roughly nine minutes, um, plus or minus calcium scoring, depends on the indication um, from, the, from the referrers. Uh, and then if we do rest the patient, then that will be down to eight minutes because we're using the CT from the, the stress. Um, currently, the whole body bone spec CT, we, I've got a range there between 30 and 40 minutes. Depends again on the indication from the, the, um, the referrers, but um, sometimes we'll scan to just below the knee, which would give you roughly top of vertex to below the knee. That will give you roughly a 30 minute scan. Uh, but if we do a whole body, generally you're looking at more like 40 minutes. But that is it, the patient will be discharged then because there's no further imaging um, indicated at that point. Um, Sestamibi parathyroid, spec CT, uh, nine minutes. Plus planar imaging, I'll, I'll explain to you about that in a sec. Lung ventilation spec, nine minutes, plus or minus uh, planar imaging. Um, lung perfusion spec CT, around 10 minutes, plus or minus uh, planar imaging. And uh, the DART scans is a fixed 20 minutes, um, and they are particularly good uh, on the machine. So, then, so the challenges. We've had several problems requiring engineer assistance, um, remote and on-site, but I, I, I have to say that in comparison with other sort of organizations we've used in the past, the, we have an extremely good engineer response time with, with the star guide. So we are talking about same day, sometimes within the hour if it's remote, um, or next day um, uh, engineer uh, service. So, uh, you know, that, that is actually important to know. With any expensive piece of kit you're buying, you need to make sure that you've got backup there. Um, it was a continuous, and it still is, a continuous learning curve for the imaging and scientific staff. Um, it, it's obviously meant to developing uh, an understanding of new concepts and controls, because it's, 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 it's slightly different uh, in, in design from the, a standard uh, 2D system like the 870DR. Um, this has been quite a big one, because it's, we've had a lengthy period of protocol optimization, and where you've seen in the previous slide where I was saying plus or minus planar imaging, that is dependent on what the radiologist will ask for, because um, that's still ongoing. Now, when you're double scanning, it puts a lot of pressure on the throughput of the department because you, you're going off one camera, taking them to the, the, the next camera, um, you know, while you, that, that other camera could be doing uh, something else. Um, again, this has been a challenging one, encouraging our consultant radiologist to adapt to um, different images. Move, just moving from 2D to 3D images requires uh, and I've been told by my colleagues, uh, the radiologists, that substantially more reporting time. And uh, something like this is worth thinking about, an increased uh, um, sensitivity leading to an increase in myocardial perfusion rest scans. So uh, I don't have any information about the specific details of future developments, um, but these are currently in the pipeline uh, to be happening quite soon. So the first one is an introduction uh, of a, a bone AI algorithm to speed up acquisitions and further improve um, image quality or reduce the dose. Depends on your departmental priorities, of course. Uh, dynamic scans uh, will be possible, bone, renal, and lymph. Uh, lymph would be really good for our department because we do a huge amount of um, melanoma studies. Uh, literally for the whole of South Wales because the burns and plastics are in Swansea. Um, myocardial perfusion coronary flow reserve, um, we've already started doing a little bit of that. Uh, continuous collaboration 
and an EU and UK user group um, who are currently in the process of creating a normal database for DAT scan and MPI scans. So, uh, in summary, therefore, I, I think it's important to evaluate the overall process for moving from the conventional 2D planar system to a 360 spec CT system. Um, and on balance and in retrospect and looking back over the last two years, uh, I think it's definitely been worth it in, in the Singleton Nuclear Medicine Department. And then I'd just like to finish by saying the key points to note is that we, we did, it has to be said, have uh, first-class pre- and post-installation training, and that is absolutely key because you, you go into a, a totally new environment. Uh, we had excellent, and we still have excellent engineer response during breakdowns, um, remote and on-site. Uh, ongoing application software development and support, and I think we're still early days uh, in that, so I think there's a lot more to come along that uh, road. Um, and finally, but most importantly, um, improved patient experience and diagnostic value. So thank you very much indeed, and um, please feel free to ask questions or even Better still, uh, share your experiences if, if you've got experiences of, of the same machines. Thank you.